None of the Brave by Beverly Cleary, Chapter 3 The Hole in the House Although Ramona was standing with her nose pressed against the front window, she was wild with impatience. She was impatient for school to start. She was impatient because she, no matter how many times her mother telephoned, the workmen had not come to start the new room, and if they did not start the new room, how was Ramona going to astound the first grade by telling them about the hole in her room? Trapped in the house. She was impatient because she had nothing to do. Ramona, how many times do I have to tell you not to rub your nose against the window? You smudged the glass. Mrs. Quimby sound, sounded as if she too looked forward at the, to the beginning of school. Ramona's answer was, Mother, here comes Howie, with bricks. Oh dear, said Mrs. Quimby. Ramona ran out to meet Howie, who was trudging along uh, Quickitat Street, pulling his little red wagon full of old bricks. The very best kind for playing brick factory, because they were old and broken with the corners crumbled away. Where did you get them? asked Ramona, who knew how scarce old bricks were in their neighborhood. At my other grandmother's, said Howie. A bulldozer was smashing some old houses, so somebody was building a shopping center, so somebody could build a shopping center, and the man told me I could pick up broken bricks. Let's get started, said Ramona, running to the garage and returning with two big bricks she and Howie used in playing a brick factory. A simple yet satisfying game. Each grasped a rock in both hands and it pound, uh, and pounded a brick into pieces, and the pieces were smithereens. The pounding was hard, tiring work. Pow, pow, pow. Then they reduced the smithereens to dust. Crunch, crunch, crunch. They were no longer six-year-olds. They were the strongest people in the world. They were giants. When the driveway was thick with red dust, Ramona dragged out the hose and pretended that a terrible flood was washing away the brick factory in a stream of red mud. Run, Howie, run before it gets you, screamed Ramona. She was mighty Ramona, brave and strong. Ramona, Howie's sneakers left red footprints, but he did not really run away. He only ran to the next driveway and back. Then the two began the game all over again. Howie's short blonde hair turned rusty red. Ramona's brown hair only looked dingy. Ramona, who was usually impatient with Howie because he always took his time and refused to get excited, found him an excellent brick factory player. He was strong and his pounding was hard and steady. They met each day on the Quimby's driveway to play their game. Their arms and shoulders ached. They had band-aids on their blisters, but they pounded on. Mrs. Quimby decided that when Ramona was playing brick factory, she was staying out of trouble. However, she did ask several times why the game could not be played in Howie's driveway once in a while. Howie always explained that his mother had a headache, or that his little sister Willa Jean was taking a nap. This is the dumbest game in the world, said Beezus, who spent her time playing jacks with Marianne when she was not reading. Why do you call your game Brick Factory? You aren't making bricks, you're wrecking them. You just do, said Ramona, who left rusty footprints on the kitchen door, rusty fingerprints on the doors, and rusty streaks in the bathtub. Picky Picky spent a lot of time washing brick dust off his paws. Mrs. Quimby had to wash separate loads of Ramona's clothes in the washing machine to prevent them from staining the rest of the laundry. Let the kids have their fun, said Mr. Quimby when he came home tired from work. At least they're out in the sunshine. He was not so tired uh, he could not run when Ramona chased him with her rusty hands. I'm gonna get you, Daddy, she shouted. I'm gonna get you. He could run fast for a man who was 33 years old, but Ramona always caught him and uh, threw her arms around him. He was not a father to worry about a little brick dust on his clothes. The neighbors all said Ramona was her father's girl. There was no doubt about that. Oh, well, soon we'll be starting. School will soon be starting, said Mrs. Quimby with a sigh. And then one morning, before Ramona and Howie could remove their bricks from the garage, their game was ended by the arrival of two workmen in an old truck. The new room was actually going to be built. Summer was suddenly worthwhile. Brick factory was forgotten as the two elderly workmen unloaded tools and marked foundation with string. Chunk, chunk. Picks tore into the lawn while Mrs. Quimby rushed out to pick the uh, zinnias uh, before the plants were yanked out of the ground. That's where the ro new room is going to be, boast Ramona boasted to Howie. For six months, don't forget. Beza still felt that they should draw, have drawn straws to see who would get first. Howie, who liked tools, spent all his time in the Quimby's watching. A trench was dug for the foundation. Forms were built. 
I'll create mixes pour and made uh, and poured. Howie knew the name of every tool and how it was used. Howie was a great one for thinking things over and figuring things out. The workmen even let him try out their tools. Ramona was not interested in tools or in thinking things over and figuring them out. She was interested in results, fast. When the workmen had gone home for the day, no one was looking. Ramona, who had been told not to touch the wet concrete, marked it with her special initial, a Q with ears and whiskers. She had invented her own Q in kindergarten after Mrs. Binney, the teacher, had told the class that the letter Q had a tail. Why stop there? Ramona had thought. Now her Q in the concrete would make the room hers, even when Beezus' turn to use a cane. Mrs. Quimby watched advertisements in the newspaper and found a second-hand dresser and bookcase for Ramona and a desk for Beezus, which she had stored in the garage, where she worked with sandpaper and paint to make them look like new. Neighbors dropped by to see what was going on. Howie's mother came to visit with his messy little sister, Willa Jean, who was a sort of child known as a toddler. Mrs. Kemp and Mrs. Quimby sat in the kitchen, drinking coffee and discussing their children, while Beezus and Ramona defended their possessions from Willa Jean. This was what grown-ups called playing with Willa Jean. When the concrete was dry, the workmen returned for the exciting part. They took crowbars from their truck, and with the screeching of nails being pulled from wood, they pried siding off the house and knocked out the lath and plaster at the back of the vacuum cleaner closet. There it was, a hole in the house. Ramona and Howie ran into the back of the door, ran through the back of the door, down the hall, and jumped out the hole round and round until the workmen said, "Get lost, kids, before you get hurt." Ramona felt light with joy, a real hole in the house that was going to lead her to her very own for six months room. She could hardly wait to go to school because now, for the first time in her life, she actually had something important to share with her class uh, for show and tell. My room, boom, my room, boom, she sang. Be quiet, Ramona, said Beezus. Can't you see I'm trying to read? Before the workmen left for the day, they nailed a sheet of plastic over the hole in the house. That night, after the sisters had gone to bed, Beezus whispered, It's sort of scary, having a hole in the house. The edges of the plastic rustled and flapped in the night breeze. Really scary. Ramona had been thinking the same thing, spooky. She planned to tell the first grade that she had not only one hole in the house, she had not only a hole in the house, she had a spooky hole in her house. A ghost could ooze in between the nails, whispered Beezus. A cold, clammy ghost, agreed Ramona with a delicious shiver. A cold, clammy ghost that sobbed in the night, elaborated Beezus, and had icy fingers that Ramona buried deeper into her bed and pulled her pillow over her ears. In a moment, she emerged. I know what would be better, she said. A gorilla. A gorilla without bones that could ooze through the plastic. Girls, called Mrs. Quimby from the living room. It's time to sleep. Ramona's whisper could barely be heard and reached out with his cold, cold hands and grabbed us, finished Beezus in the softest whisper. The sisters shivered with pleasure and were silent while Ramona's imagination continued. The boneless gorilla ghost could ooze under the closet door. Let's see, and he could swing on the clothes bar, and in the morning when they opened the closet door to get their school clothes, he would. Ramona fell asleep before he could she could decide what the ghost would do.